Hi everyone, there's a problem with tutorials. Okay, it's not as nefarious as it sounds, but this is something that's always crossed my mind when making educational content for people online. We as creators prepare demonstrations to show you, which most of the time cut off a quite important part of the actual work process, which is coming up with the ideas, experimenting, seeing what works and what doesn't work, and then coming to a nice looking conclusion. Now I'm talking more specifically if you're not working from hyper-specific references, or if you don't already know exactly what you want to make, you know, but for most of us tutorial and educational content creators, I think our job is mostly to interpret patterns from noise. The noise in this case would be every possible thing you can do with the piece of software, every possible feature, everything that could be made with them. It's just noise. There's so many possibilities. And it's our job to take that noise and create patterns from them to show people, hey, look, with these features, you can make things like this. Part of the process in doing that is experimenting with those features and creating cool looking things. A lot of people want to know how to be able to generate lots of cool looking unique things just by themselves without having to follow someone else. And that's something that we don't always teach. A lot of it's more like a natural intuition thing where as you're making one thing, you inspire yourself into a different direction. Maybe some things are too difficult, some things just don't pan out, but as you're experimenting, you're coming up with new ideas. So I thought, hey, why don't I just do at least one video where I show that part of the process? It will likely be less exciting than most tutorials because it'll be less condensed, a lot more scatterbrained, I would imagine, and a lot harder to follow along with, but that's the whole point. So after I'm done speaking here, we're gonna cut over to that footage and you can watch me put together a new piece of artwork. This to be specific. All I started with was a vague idea of, I want to represent the number of subscribers I have in Blender, most likely through the use of cubes. So how do we go from a basic idea like that to something like this? Well, let's take a look. 121,813 cubes, how are we going to represent that? Well, obviously using an array modifier, I would think. So, I don't know, let's take a look. If I make a cube, uh, well, how big is it going to be? It's quite a few cubes. Maybe if I scale it down a bit, but I want to do this in a kind of uniform way, I guess. So if we go to the end menu, hi, Baijin, nice to see you. Um, item, 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 scale, if I make it just 0.25, um, so if we go like by tens, that'll be easier to multiply, I guess. Okay, let's take a look. Array, um, if we do factor two. So we know we've got 10 there. We need to do a tiny bit of maths, won't we? But actually, no, if, if we're doing like 100,000, but I don't want it to be like too long. It's probably, this isn't making any sense. You're just watching me ramble. Okay, education mode. So I want to be able to visualize lots and lots of cubes but I don't want it to just be like one flat shape. We can take a look at how that looks, but it probably won't be very visually impressive. Maybe we want to like fly through them with an animation afterwards. We need to be able to get a, like a sense of the volume of them. Maybe if I make that 100, it'll be easier to multiply. Okay, so how many 100s are there in 100,000? 100, a thousand, because it's uh, 100 thousands. Anyway, so we have 100, and then if we make another array, and I guess we'll do it on the other axis so it goes in the other direction, then actually I'll make that two. So 1,000 of those. So that's 100,000 cubes, I believe. I may be wrong, but, but I think that's the general gist of what 100,000 cubes look like. Pretty interesting. Aha! Zoom all the way through. Hello, all my lovely subs, most of which are just lurkers. It's even hitting the end of the clipping distance there. Okay. So I guess how do we make this more visually impressive and how do we manage the extra 21,813? Well, I guess I'll do them separately and then we can just like add them together. So if I copy that and how many 100s and 20,000? That's 200. So 200 for you. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's 120,000. And then if we keep going smaller, I guess we'll do eight. So that's 800. And I'll just do one more line with one modifier, which is 13. So that's the entire sub count as it stands now. Let's just increase the clipping distance. Might be 1,500. So that is everyone. All right, fantastic. But how do we make this a bit more kind of like visually impressive from a volume standpoint? Or maybe we can visualize it like a crowd, like a stadium. I suppose if we segmented it, the stadium idea might actually be pretty cool. Cause then we can just like take the rectangular segments, angle them up and just like have them looking around like a general semicircular stadium-ish shape. And then we can like plonk ourselves in the middle there and kind of visualize it with like a high field of view. If that makes sense. Just kind of improving here. So 20,000 looks like a good way to segment it down. So if we get five of those, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So if I delete that one, actually. So we've got a one, two, three, four, and five. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120,000. Oh, I forgot the extra 1,000. All right, so that means I need one more line. 100 times 10. 
Okay, so that's the extra 1,000 there. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 1,813. I believe that's right. Okay, so let's put our camera somewhere and we can imagine that we're going to do something interesting with it. What's the ultra wide resolution? This is why I have like um, text reference objects in my default startup file. Ultra wide, 2560 by 1080. That's a 21 by 9 resolution. Let's, yeah, we'll go for something a bit lower. 60 is all right. So how are we going to angle these? X45. You just need to give me a minute here while I kind of just, you know, um, play around with the different angles and see what works. I delete that one. Okay, so that's two there. God, I think we're going to need a wider field of view to visualize this. Okay, so maybe two more for the corner. 20, 40, 60, 80. Let's get rid of those. It's kind of starting to look a bit like a baseball court, I think. I don't know. I'm not really interested in sports, but I think they have like kind of square look to them. Let's get rid of those lights and stuff. Put in a sun lamp. Although the distance on the camera probably isn't high enough. Oh, it might be, but I just don't have it anywhere near strong enough. Or do I have the world volume active? Ah, of course I do. That'll do it. There you go. All right, so our massive stadium is kind of coming together. Maybe if I replace these with Suzanne heads, that'd be pretty funny. But it would mess up the positions quite a bit. Can I put one more of you there? Let's tie in these up. I might stack some of these on top of each other. So if I put you there, that's one. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Let's put something on the ground in this unnecessarily massive scene, which I might have to end up scaling down. And let's give them some kind of material and link them all together. I'll put them all into one collection called Crowd, just to kind of organize it and make it easier to select all of them at once. Let's scale them down and make this a lot smaller to get it kind of to a more sensible scale in the scene. Center of the world is there, so let's bring them all towards the center of the world a bit and give the ground a material which I will probably make a lot darker. There we go, to make it easier to see everything. Let's play a bit with the density of the volume, give ourselves some extra lighting to play with. I still think this is probably like way too large. Right, scratch the stadium idea, it's far too complex. I'm gonna do um, something a bit more pretty in like terms of a visualization. Let's take two of those. something kind of along these lines if you know what I mean like uh, like more of a data visualization but the points are so small that they're kind of blending together in like a lot of the middle so maybe if I had like a person standing down here as well kind of looking up that could be pretty cool well I think I need to tidy up this bit first so that looks about right maybe if we came from like a slightly more frontal perspective would the cubes be easier to see individually hmm. Okay, well, what if I scaled them down a bit, I guess, or increased the size between them? I'll have to readjust everything manually, but maybe that's just how we need to do. So, free and free. But then again, if we just zoom out and fit them all back in again, it will still look quite densely packed and high frequency. Perhaps the emission is part of the problem, maybe. What if I thinned them so there was less like geometry overlapping from certain angles? I wonder if that would work. So if I did something like that, so they were mostly just squares. The ha, there we go. That's a lot better. Big brain movement. Okay, well, I want all the others to be the same. So let me try and figure out a way to do that without having to readjust everything. Unless I solidify, so we do it after the fact. Like um, if I get rid of all the back faces. Oh, the joys of trying to find the laziest ways to do things in Blender. All right, so that's all of the basic faces. And to be honest, that looks all right. Do I really need to thicken them? Like, if we come to the front on perspective now, maybe I can, now that we've got the extra space in between them, maybe I can turn up the lighting a bit so it's a bit more impactful again. I quite like the vibe of being low down and thinking of this as some piece of like mega architecture almost. That's why I kind of want to have like a human presence standing in there. All right, well, should we bring someone in then? All right, let me paste one of my IK guys in. There we go, from like my rigged based characters pack. We got you on the local mode, don't need that. Okay, let's get you kind of looking in. It's not a perfect rig because I'm not a very good rigger, but um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. Actually kind of wanted to be a bit smaller just to sell the sense of scale a bit. I don't really care too much about the hands. That might take too long to get right. So there we go. We have a guy standing there in front of our mega visualization for the subscribe account. Let's rotate him a bit more. I wonder closer, further. Maybe if I put something up here to kind of like explain what's going on with this. All right, so what was the number again? That was 121813. So this is using Barlow, again, taking some hints from the last video I put out about the powerful text. 
Might as well give this the same material as the uh, actual cubes. Bigger or smaller? That's the question. If I duplicate that and do like a smaller subscribers text, subscribers, or perhaps have you underneath and scale it so it matches the width, something like this. We're getting into some like graphic design territory here, but does it need to be the same color or will a different color work? Let's try yellow or blue. I don't know, keeping it white seems pretty nice because it's like a consistent grayscale kind of style to it. So what else can we do to pretty this up? Add some variation to the floor perhaps? Let me take a look at my uh, asset packs down here. Procedural patterns, dirt grunge. Let's plug you into the roughness, give you a texture coordinate and scale you up a fair bit. So like we're getting, you know, an imperfect flooring. So the reflection is going to be a bit different all the way along. It's looking quite interesting, but I think I'm seeing some inconsistency up there somewhere. Oh yeah, there is. Okay. So the position wasn't perfect. I mean, I especially like the reflection down here, but it still kind of feels weird that it's completely flat. It's usually the kind of thing when I look at beginner artworks, I look at that and think, ah, you know, you couldn't be bothered to make it any more interesting than that. So first of all, let me drag that down. So it's almost touching. Is there anything funky we can do to quickly disrupt the floor? Some trenches, perhaps maybe having multiple levels of uh, some of the planes. Hang on, let's play around. I don't know, let's do some random pillars. Gives us a bit of a strange vibe. Uh, let me duplicate these many times. Okay, so we're getting a lot of them in one spot. Then let me select all of them and press space, randomize, transform. Let's open up that operator and start stretching these out a bit, just so I don't have to place them all manually like that. I'm not too sure about having the vertical difference. Maybe, it depends how it looks. No, not fond of that. Push some of them into the ground a bit. All right, okay, let's think about this. Maybe I should add some slight variation to the ground. Like something is better than nothing, right? But first of all, let me scale it down. And we'll need to give it a significant amount of geometry. I hope this scene doesn't start struggling. Let's apply that to start with and go back in. Well, I realize I might be able to use Biogen for this a bit as well. Um, okay, so I've just applied my alien effect. It's using the geometry nodes now. So if I want to change the strength of that, let's go into the geo nodes tree. All right, we've got the multiply. Let's turn you way down. Let's shade you smooth. Now if we make it even less, just trying to balance this right. Quite interesting how the cube's reflection is kind of bending with the surface as well now. Not sure if we've got enough geometry though. Let's amp that up. And on the side of that, let's take our guy and move his feet down a bit. So let's see what we've got here now. Hmm. So this is generally what happens when I'm making something, I just sit there staring at it for a while thinking, yeah, what do we do? Let's rotate the camera a tiny bit. All right, what's going wrong down here? Oh, I see, okay. Maybe let me try the different mode, try planar instead. Oof, okay, minus 0 0.003. Maybe that's a bit smoother. All right, so what are we thinking? Nice visualization, white on black, quite emissive, nice sort of reflection. Gives a bit of a surreally VJ loop kind of vibe. You know how there's like tons of reflections and those kinds of things. You know, we put a few more cubes around. I think it's maybe quite an interesting result for like something that's completely improvised. I don't know if anyone will find any value in this video whatsoever. Like, I guess the important thing here is when we're doing tutorials and you know, regular videos and stuff like that, usually it's quite prepared. But an important part of 3D artwork is ideation and kind of learning to adapt ideas on the fly. That is, if you're not working from highly specific references. But most people don't get to see that process from a creator when they're just consuming the highly edited and highly prepared video content. So hopefully in this video you saw that I started with a vague idea, I just wanted to represent like the number of subscribers in Blender. Then we started piecing it together, I was thinking about some kind of stadium idea but that didn't really work out but I ended up having like a slant and I liked how it looked on the frame. So we kind of took that then applied a style and then I was inspired by the kind of emissive style to think hmm maybe some kind of visualization. And then from there I added some more things to the scene and we kind of settled onto one of these more kind of typical abstract artwork looking things. So it just goes to show you that you don't need to know exactly what you're doing to make something that looks kind of cool. So yeah, hopefully you found it interesting. I'll probably do what I can to try and salvage this in the edit to try and make it a bit less boring. But if you made it this far, make sure to leave a 100 emoji in the comments so I can actually see who made it this far through the video and who wasn't completely put off by my random ramblings. If you want to support my work, you can check out my products and tools on curtisholt.online forward slash store and sign up to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash curtisholt to get your name put permanently on the Hall of Patrons artwork. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.